Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our video on calculating distance in three dimensions. If we want to find the distance between two points in 3D space, what we're doing is really finding the length of the straight line that runs between those two points. If we do a similar thing to what we just did in our previous video in the series about finding midpoint in R3, we'll go ahead and label one of our points P here as X1, Y1, Z1 for its coordinates, and our other point Q as x2, y2, z2. We're going to briefly show you where the 3D distance formula comes from. We'll start by looking at the distance from p in my picture here to the point that is directly underneath q at the same height as p, and we're going to think of this dotted line distance as the hypotenuse of a flat right triangle in the plane. We can find this hypotenuse distance using the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula from 2D space that you might have seen back in algebra. So if we remember this formula, and even if you don't, we have it here for you, then that gives us the length of this dotted line that runs horizontally from P to the point that is directly below Q. What we'll do now is complete this sort of vertical right triangle that we've already started building here. I think you can see it. And the other leg of this triangle will just be the vertical distance between the two. We can find this just by taking z2 minus z1. So now we'll just use our Pythagorean theorem on this vertical right triangle here to find the length of this hypotenuse. Here I'm calling the distance between P and Q capital D, since we just used lowercase in our previous step. And our Pythagorean theorem says that the distance squared equals the sum of the other two sides squared. You can see here that the first quantity on the right side has the square of a square root, and so that's really just going to reduce to what's inside the brackets. With this right side now basically looking like three of the same kind of statement, we just want d instead of d squared now. So we square root both sides, and we get the formula for distance between two points in three-dimensional space in R3. This is essentially the same formula as in 2D space. It adds a third quantity squared under the root with the z-coordinates in it. So if you already have distance in R2 down pretty well, here you just have to not forget to include the third coordinates when calculating in R3. Let's work through a few examples of finding some distances in R3. We're going to go ahead and keep our distance formula for 3D space down in the bottom right there. So here we're going to find the distance between the point P, which is 2, negative 1, 3, and Q, which is negative 2, 2, positive 8. So in terms of my formula here, if this is my first point P, then that makes this X1, this Y1, and this Z1. And my point Q is my second point, so that makes this the second X coordinate, the second Y coordinate, and the second Z coordinate. So we've got X2, Y2, Z2 in Q. And so now we'll just figure out our distance. So our distance is going to equal the square root of X2 minus X1. So that's going to be negative 2 minus 2, all of that squared, plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. That's going to be 2 minus negative 1 quantity squared, plus z2 minus z1 squared, which will be 8 minus 3 here, all squared. And we'll have a root over all of that. So now we'll go ahead and simplify some of this here. In the parentheses, negative 2 minus 2, that'll give us negative 4 squared, plus this is like 2 plus 1, so that will be 3 squared, and then our 8 minus 3 here is obviously 5 squared. We have all of those things squared, and then if we just square those, that'll give us the square root of 16 plus 9 plus 25. If we add all of those up, that's going to give us the square root of 50. And we can actually simplify the square root of 50. Uh, 25 goes into 50, and that's a perfect square, so we can pull out the square root of 25, which is 5. We actually get a reduced version of 5 root 2 units for our answer for the distance between these two points. Looking at our next example with some fractions in it, we want to find the distance between the point 3 halves, 0, negative 5 fourths. So that'll be our x1, y1, and z1. And the point q, our second point, 7 fourths is our x2, 5 halves is our y2, and negative 2 is our z2. So if we go ahead and find the distance and enter into our formula here, x2 minus x1 
that's going to be 7 fourths minus 3 halves. We'll do some work on that in a bit, make that a little more friendly, plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. So that'll be y2, which is 5 halves uh, minus 0 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. So z2 is negative 2 minus z1, so minus negative 5 fourths here. All of that squared. We'll take the square root of all of that. So here now what we'll want to do in each of these is make sure we have a common denominator if we need one. So here I'll think of this 3 over 2 as 6 over 4, multiplying the top and the bottom by 2. So 7 fourths minus 6 fourths squared. Plus this is really just going to be 5 halves squared here, so we don't have to worry about a common denominator in there. Plus, if we think of this as negative 2 over 1, then what we'll need to do is multiply the top and bottom by 4. So we'll get negative 8 over 4 minus negative would be plus 5 over 4. All of that squared. Again, square root over all that. And now we can simplify to one term here. 7 minus 6 will give us 1 fourth squared. We already have one single fraction in the y parentheses here, 5 halves squared plus this negative 8 plus 5 will give us negative 3 fourths squared. And now we just need to square all of this. I'll continue on this line here. So 1 fourth squared will give us 1 over 16 plus 25 on top here and 4 on the bottom. Here, the square of this negative is going to give us a positive. We'll get a 9 on the top and a 16 on the bottom. And you'll notice we still don't have a common denominator, so what I'll really need to do is go ahead and make this over 16 as well. This 25 over 4. So we'll go ahead and multiply by 4. That will give us then 1 over 16, plus we'll get 100 over 16, plus 9 over 16. So we have 1 plus 100 plus 9 on the tops of these, that will give us 110 over 16. And we can think of this again as separate roots, so think of this as the square root of 110 over the square root of 16. We probably don't know the square root of 110, but we do know the square root of 16. So we get root 110 over 4. And it turns out we can't actually simplify root 110, so we'll go ahead and leave this as square root of 110 over 4. That's the distance between our p and our q here. Looking at one last one here with some radicals in the coordinates, we want to find the distance between p, which is root 2, comma 4 root 7, comma negative 2 root 3. So that's my x1, y1, and z1 for my formula. And our point q is 5 root 2, comma 3 root 7, comma 2 root 3. So this is our x2, y2, z2. And so we'll start writing our distance formula here. So our distance formula is going to be the root of x2 minus x1, which is 5 root 2 minus root 2, all of that squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, so here we'll get 3 root 7 minus our y1, which is 4 root 7. That squared plus z2 minus z1 squared is going to be 2 root 3 minus negative 2 root 3, so just be careful there with the signs. And we'll have the root of all that once we're finished with that. So our distance is going to be, if you'll notice here, these are like terms at least, right? 5 root 2's minus a root 2 would give us 4 root 2's squared, plus 3 root 7's minus 4 root 7's is negative 1 root 7, plus here 2 root 3 minus negative would be like plus another 2 root 3 would give us 4 root 3's. That squared as well, we'll have our root over everything here. So now our distance, just be careful squaring. So if I square the outside here, 4 times 4 gives me 16, times root 2 times root 2 gives me the number 2. That's what a square root is, right? That thing times itself should give me whatever number is in here. 
plus this negative times a negative is going to give us a positive. So we get root seven times root seven, which is actually just seven there. Plus uh, we square the four, so that'll give us 16 times root three times root three, which would just be three. And so now here that's going to give us the square root of 32 plus seven plus 48. And let's see, 32 plus 48 is 80. If we add the seven, then that's going to give us the square root of 87. And it turns out we can't simplify this. 87 is just three times 29, and both of those are prime. Neither one's a perfect square. So we'll go ahead and leave this square root 87 as our simplified version of the answer for the distance between these two points. All right, hopefully some of these examples have helped you out finding your distance in 3D space. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.